Everything's designed and engineered to get the highest possible flow rate. So at its max with the five millimeter nozzle, you can reach 2.5 kilograms per hour. So about 5.5 pounds per hour. Hey, where's... Uh, if you want to print faster, uh, you could move faster, but also you could deposit more material. And at the end of the day, it's all about getting more parts printed. All right, guys, we're here today at Dyes Design here at AMUG 2023, and they've brought along with them to show off their Pulsar and Typhoon high flow extruders. Now, the Pulsar is a pellet extruder, and this is basically something that's used when you want to print really big stuff, and you want to print it faster, and you want to save a ton of money on filament because it's pellets, the raw material from which filament is made. So we're here today with Simon from Dyes Design and he's going to explain a little bit about what you brought to the show and why you brought these of all the things. So we wanted to really showcase our more industrial grade uh, extrusion system. Right. Um, that's why we brought our large scale uh, printheads basically. So that's the Pulsar pellet extruder. As you can see, it's quite large. Um, the weight is about seven kilograms. So you really need a sturdy printer to mount it. Um, but you could also retrofit an old CNC router or even mount it on a robotic arm to enable really large scale additive manufacturing. You could print like car parts, molds or bolts old or any really yeah. large prototypes you might need or even end production parts as well. All right, and then you've got the 2.85. So this is more of a, this is a filament extruder, but it's designed for extremely high flow on 2.85 filament, obviously. You don't get a 2.5 millimeter nozzle on most 3D printers because that's bigger than the actual, uh, basically, well, it's huge. Here we've got an extruder design and then we've got these interchangeable heads, it looks like. Uh, does this just, is that a, like a heat break? Do you yeah, screw it's this a on? heat break. We call it the heat core. So as you can see here, there's a knob here. You can easily change the old heat cores um, like that and then you can swap them all together. Um, wow. So basically this is equivalent to your old, good old Atens. Once again, it's for large scale uh, printers. Didn't really make sense to have those new large scale printers with right. small desktop printers. Right. Yeah. You would print a car in like uh, two weeks. Um, so yeah. for us, it More makes that. sense yeah, to have a, huh. an extruder that, that suits those big printers. And that's why we came out with the Typhoon extruder. Everything's designed and engineered to get the highest possible flow rate. That's why we're using 2.85 filament instead yep. of 175, right. because we want to get as much material in it as possible. Okay. It's using a quad pinch system. So we use four gears to pinch the material and bring it down. So you get faster feed rate than usual uh, extruders. The old melt zone is really tall and yeah. we're using two independent eaters. I was going to say, you got two different melt yeah, zones, exactly. right? Okay, exactly. this is getting into professional extrusion, right? Yeah. All right. So really with, with all those uh, factors, we can get a uh, flow rate up to, let's say one kilogram per hour or about uh, 2.5 pounds per hour of material right. throughput. So at its max with the five millimeter nozzle, you can reach Ooh. 2.5 kilogram per hour, so about 5.5 pounds per hour. Gee whiz, check this out. This, these are the nozzle sizes they've got here. I mean, and that is just, they got the flat tips, just like we like on our smaller yeah. nozzles, but uh, these things are beastly. The nozzle we show here are on the standard version for Cartesian or Gentry machines, but we also have the same nozzle size um, uh, for a non-planar application. So. Uh, you might not see it here, but it's like... Uh, it's a pointy tip. Yeah, it's teeth, yeah. quite of like a elongated nozzle yeah. to reach more clearance around Just it. like an E3D. So you got yeah. certain angles and the lower the angles, the less that you can go at angles, but the higher the angle, you could go straight up, straight down, because your nozzle is not actually going to hit the thing in that non-planar form. Exactly. So like you were mentioning, you can do uh, robot arms. You've been seeing a lot of applications for robot arms. I think that makes a ton of sense because you get complete freedom of, of you know, angle, direction, whatever. Uh, plus, just finding a machine without spending a couple hundred grand that'll hold this and actually move it around at any given speed is going to be relatively difficult. Um, so it's exactly, and it makes a lot with of sense. With machines, Gentry machine, you you get limited on the X, Y, and Z. 
Uh, but with right. robots, you can print uh, taller parts. Yeah. So you, only with one one machine. Actually. You can put it on a track and print exactly. really long parts. Yeah, exactly. All right. So well, check this out. Just to give you an idea of some of these parts, the size that the nozzles print. We've got a 0.9 millimeter, a 1.2 millimeter, a 1.8 millimeter, and a beastly 2.5 millimeter. So you see the layer lines just continually get bigger and bigger. We like playing with big nozzles. Cole's gonna love this video. Anything you'd like to uh, leave off with the audience? No, simply that uh, if you wanna print faster, uh, you could move faster, but also you could deposit more material. And at the end of the day, it's all about getting more parts printed. Sweet. Thank you so much, Simon. It's fantastic. Thanks. I love seeing your guys work. If you guys want to learn more, check out visionminer.com and Dyes Design. They're based, are, they're based up in Canada, our brethren from the north, and they make really cool stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a positive rest of your day. I'll see you on the next video.